Uh, hello to everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Boris Kržan from University of Ljubljana, Slovenia, Faculty for Mechanical Engineering, more precisely, Laboratory for Tribology and Interface Nanotechnology. I was asked to prepare a presentation, corrective, predictive, and condition-based maintenance. After short introduction, I will define these firms according to European norm 13306, and then I prepared a few slides about each strategy. I will end with conclusion. So over the last 40 years, maintenance has perhaps changed more than any other management disciplines. Uh, these changes are due to increase of the number and variety of physical assets, much more complex designs, new maintenance techniques, and changing views on maintenance organization and responsibilities. So, since 1930s, the evolution of maintenance can be traced through three generations. You heard about that, but to repeat. First generation, in those times, industry was not highly mechanized, so breakdown did not matter much. Most equipment was simple and over-designed, so that made it reliable and easy to repair. So at that time, there was no really need for systematic maintenance. By 1950s, machines of all kinds were more numerous and more complex. Uh, industry was starting to depend on them. Downtime was recognized as a major concern and uh, activities performed for failure detection led to the uh, concept of preventive maintenance. New research, new technologies enable developing of condition monitoring for early fault detection. So the focus of, of third generation is reliability as well as a new expectation. Expectation as safety and no damage to the environment. Uh, European norm 13306 uh, define two main strategies, corrective maintenance and planned maintenance. Corrective maintenance is carried out after fault recognition. So sometimes it's called reactive maintenance. And it's subdivided into deferred and immediate corrective maintenance or emergency uh, corrective maintenance. But some activities can be done before fault detection. And plant maintenance is carried out at predetermined intervals or according to prescribed criteria. There are two forms, predetermined maintenance or calendar-based maintenance and condition-based maintenance where we react on actual condition of the component. So we should be able to measure par some parameters. So we start with corrective maintenance. Definition says maintenance carried out after fault recognition and intended to put an item into a state in which it can perform a required function. So this is philosophy, run it till it breaks. Uh, failures are sudden, or could be catastrophic. Repair works can't be planned because we are always surprised, it's always surprised. 
And probably the most important costs are primary repair and secondary downtime. If we look at these simple charts, it's here is time and then money, so income costs. These are fixed costs and variable <coughs> costs. This uh, red line represent, represents total costs and is steady increasing line. The blue line are revenues. So what's important here, this break even point. From this point right, it's a profit. Very simple to understand. But what's here, sudden failure. So there's no money income. The costs raised because maybe some overtime work is necessary to buy components and so on. And what's happened, this previous break-even point is now moved to the time scale on the right. So the effect is lower profit than it could be. So these are repair costs and these difference are costs because of a downtime. And mostly these costs of a downtime, downtime prevail. Uh, it's always good to evident uh, these downtimes. Uh, one form could be to fill in major breakdown report. Uh, you fill in stoppages longer than uh, 10 minutes. This is in my, my language, but don't uh, worry because every company should adopt this report for uh, its needs. But mainly this report, uh, these reports consist of general data and failure description. Uh, implemented versions uh, could have progress activities and transfer <coughs> of experience. So activities that can prevent similar failure on another set. So what we learned from this uh, breakdown. I put here one method, uh, five, five Y analysis, that is from total productive uh, maintenance, but it's very easy and uh, simple. It doesn't need much time. So the main philosophy is like that. So here is one famous poem for want a nail, for want of a nail. Uh, I don't go on and read it, but uh, <laughs> uh, technical philosophy uh, is the same. Follow that poem. So we have a result and we have a cause. So we will read it from the back. Define the problem. What's here the problem? The kingdom is lost. And we should ask why the battle is lost, why the rider is lost, why the horse is lost, why the shoe is lost, why because of horse shoe nail is lost. So in five steps we have this connection between the result and a cause. So what's the problem? Coolant is leaking from the machine. Why a seal was damaged? Why metal shavings got into coolant? Why a screen on the coolant pump was broken? Why screen is located where it gets hit by falling parts? Okay, we have now connection. So if you just, I don't know, some someone uh, find a pool of liquid near the machine, uh -huh. the seal was damaged, so cor corrective action, we will change the seal. Okay, 
we solve the problem, but, but not for a long time. Because in the coolant are <coughs> particles, and they will damage that new seal very fast. So the proper solution is to replace the screen, to flush the system, to replace the coolant, and of course, replace of seals. And it's a long-term solution. So if you follow this method, as I said, it's simple, it's fast, it's easy to teach. But of course, it's not data-driven. So it's not repeatable. And it's uh, limited to personal experience of one that uh, do that. Uh, quickly, pros and cons of corrective reactive maintenance. Low cost, less stuff, especially at the beginning of the operation. And limited knowledge needed. You need people who are skilled to replace or repair the component. You don't know to understand the whole process, what's going on, what's behind. Uh, disadvantages are normally higher costs comparing to uh, other strategies and uh, uh, some catastrophal damages could happen. So where safety is important, this strategy uh, is not uh, permitted. We saw these uh, curves, failure distribution patterns. Uh, so the earliest view of failure was simple. As things got older, they were more likely to fail. This is this curve called traditional, but later they discovered that something could happen at the beginning of the operation and they defined this but uh, tube curve. Uh, by the 1980s, they discovered uh, four others. Uh, and uh, as mentioned my previous speaker, these first three, a traditional butt tube curve and slow aging, are time dependent. But next three, uh, news the best, random, and news the worst, are not time dependent. So let's have a closer look to uh, this first one, traditional. Uh, we have example of pump impellers. So condition new and this line is failed. You can see that uh, most impellers fail in this very similar rate except this A, it may be, pro it may be improper, improperly heat treated and this B, maybe the fluid was too abrasive at that time. Uh, so let's look this chart too. We have population of 110 impellers and frequency of the failure is presented here. So in the first period, one fails. In the second period, also one fails. After a while, uh, these numbers are higher. So this di distribution is very similar to normal or Gaussian di distribution, but it's shifted on the uh, time scale. So here are failed items, here are survived items. If we start with uh, 110, one failed, at the end of the first period are 109 survived. Uh, for technical terms, uh, it's uh, much more uh, usable conditional probability of failure uh, de defined here. Uh, and uh, this is percentage 
uh, of failed items. So what's important here uh, to note? Here is calculated mean the between failures, mean time between failures. It equals here 12.3 periods. That means that half of the, of the population failed. So this is reactive maintenance, as we, already, uh, as we have already discussed. But we can define useful life. It's just a little bit before this distinguished point. It's in this diagram defined as 10 periods. So if we replace the components during this period, so very close to this distinguished point, the pr probability of a failure is very, very low. And if we will do again and again and again, we have a great probability that in the lifetime of the pump, uh, impeller will not fail. And this is the base for preventive predetermined uh, maintenance. It is defined as maintenance carried out at predetermined intervals or according to prescribed criteria and intended to reduce the probability of failure or the degradation of the functioning of the item. Uh, so the heart of this strategy is planning and scheduling. Uh, planning defines what work will be accomplished and how. It provides all necessary that maintenance personnel need to complete their task efficiently. Uh, schedule ensures that resources, people, material, and a set to be maintained will be available at certain time and place. Symptoms or effects of ineffective planning are easy to see. So people standing around and waiting on parts, high rework, maintenance personnel arriving at the job site and waiting for the set system to be shut down, uh, frequent trips to storeroom by maintenance personnel, and production doubt I'm always more than estimated. Uh, so advantages, disadvantages, advantage, cost effective in, in many capital intensive processes, reduced equipment or process failure, and flexibility uh, allows for the adjustment of maintenance periodicity. Disadvantages, there are also some potential for incidental damage to components in conducting unneeded maintenance or initial defects input. So if we have component with, with this uh, failure uh, distribution and replace it with the new we install this spike into the system. So the old component work well and new one start with this spike. So the conditional probability uh, of a failure at this period is higher than before. It's labor intensive and catastrophic failures still likely to occur. Periodic maintenance, it's not the safest method. Uh, again, the case with uh, roller bearings, so failure pattern random. We have some number of roller bearings. This one fails in the first period, this one in third, uh, and so on. And uh, conditional probability of failure is random. It's constant. That's, there's no distinguished points here. 
bearings do doesn't fall instantly. You need it's some slope here, it's condition, and this condition is deteriorates slowly for rolling bearings about four months. So if we are able to follow that characteristic, to measure some parameters, we can always, we have time to replace that component before the failure. So we have four months. So we need to get information from the system. Uh, I like gears, so it's uh, an example from gears. We can uh, detect vibration analysis, wear debris, uh, we can measure temperature. Uh, if the crack is subsurface, we can use acoustic emission or we can define uh, the chemistry of the oil. There are several methods. And this is the base of condition-based maintenance, so preventive maintenance based on performance and or parameter monitoring and subsequent actions. Uh, we defined Tribo Diagnostic Circle, which follows the common used uh, circles for technical diagnostics but uh, there are some changing. So we tribologists believe that the essential is contact mode. Everything starts in the contact. Uh, so we, sh we should define here components. We have here uh, rolling bearing, gears, that could be cutting tool, forming tool, so on. Contact conditions, sliding, rolling, uh, oscillating, etc. And lubrication mechanism. Elasto hydrodynamic, mixed uh, boundary or hydrodynamic. Uh, very usually between contact mode and sensor is transfer media. That could be solid, liquid or gas and there are also on sensor some unwanted signals that should be eliminated uh, from the measurement. Uh, signals are friction, force, acceleration, uh, viscosity and so on. Uh, and these signals are processed to, analy to analysis. Uh, we have here two parallel analysis, this traditional, let's say, signal analysis, spectral analysis, capstrom analysis, uh, uh, simulating, modeling, and so on, and tribological analysis, uh, friction and wear analysis, surface degradation analysis, surface chemistry analysis, oil chemistry analysis, uh, and so on. These outputs provide data for diagnostic reasoning that could be uh, logical human reasoning or automatic based on advanced software or expert system and so on. The result are dynamic condition diagnosis, condition modes, so stable, unstable, uh, slowly increasing, chaotic, whatever, tribological failure, pitting, scoring, uh, scuffing, uh, wear, and reliability, lifetime and probability of a failure. Uh, very often actions are necessary, replacement, repair, redesign, warnings or shut down. This circle is close symbolizing ongoing 
process again and again. Uh, so I have one sample contact uh, mode components or gears, uh, contact conditions, sliding and trolling, lubrication and last elastohydrodynamic lubrication, transfer media oil, sensors are uh, online sensors for oil properties. So it's inductive sensor, a sensor for uh, electric capacity, electric resistance measurement, and signals are uh, moisture, concentration of wear particles, the electric constant. Actually, this reasoning is more or less in progress. So this is the system. Uh, this is oil reservoir. Uh, gears are immersed in the oil. Oil is pumped, this is a pump, through sensors and is returned back to the container. Sensors, there are three, and data acquisition transform. It's wireless router to transfer signal to the uh, database and diagnostic model. Uh, hydraulic scheme is here. This is a look of that uh, unit. Uh, this is a pump. Sensors are here. They are not uh, seen, but okay. Uh, so metallic particle sensor, aqua sensor, and fluid control sensor. So we are capable to build systems for uh, gear, for gearboxes, for gear applications, or a little bit different. This sensor is different, and we don't need a pump if uh, we monitor hydraulic system. A programmable device, database, it's very important. And actually, we are doing now to implement this system on the higher level. So at the moment, we can record the results, the oil properties, and this diagnostic model is here. So advantages, disadvantages, improved system reliability, and decreased maintenance cost by focusing resources on executing the right things, minimizing spare part costs, and reducing system, system downtime. Of course, improved operator and environment safety. Uh, disadvantages, actually, they are not really disadvantages, but some investment costs uh, but they can be very fast uh, return back. Costs in staff training, so this method needs uh, people capable to operate the system. Uh, and one thing, savings potential not readily seen by management. Uh, when something is work fluently, it's easy then to describe that uh, managers that you need money and money for these investments. So to conclude uh, the message of this presentation, all equipment in a facility is not of equal importance to either the process or facility safety. So this is world class distribution it should be less than 10% of corrective maintenance, 25 to 35 predetermined maintenance, and about half of all activities condition based. So corrective maintenance is appropriate for small parts and equipment, not critical equipment, equipment unlike to fail and redundant systems. Uh, Predetermined maintenance is suitable for equipment subject to wear. 
because we have that distinct point uh, and we can react uh, on time. Consumable equipment, equipment with a known failure pattern and manufacturer recommendation and condition based maintenance, equipment with random failure pattern, critical equipment, equipment not subject to wear and system which failure may be induced by incorrect preventive maintenance. So, thank for your attention.